and fear is increasing. And when we look around, we, we don't really see anybody, at least I don't, y'all forgive me, I'm including myself, we don't really see anybody that's a strong spiritual representation of the Word of God. You know what I just said? Mm -hmm. Most people, they preach and teach the Word, but they have and sprinkle with their own character. Their own nature is mixed in. Their own opinion is mixed in. They make God into a man. There's a whole group of people, and I'm calling them out, the black Hebrew Israelites. They have all this scriptural knowledge, but no spirituality. They will fight, they will curse, they will fornicate, they'll commit adultery, and they'll hate, but yet they have knowledge. The scripture said that some people are forever learning. But what? Not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? The knowledge of the truth will make you live right. That's the difference. You won't just be quoting scripture. You'll be living a lifestyle that's in representation of the scripture. So we just, we're just settling now because the world is in turmoil. There seems to be no real leaders. Everybody's afraid staying at home, and fear is just rampant right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, so because of that, who is leading the body of Christ? Where are the leaders at? Where are those who are supposed to be leading the body of Christ? Where are they? Where? You know where they're at? They're home scared. It was easy when there was no pandemic and everybody could just go anywhere they want to go at any time, and we could just raise offerings and just be a wonder in the presence of the people. But when something serious strikes, and there is a concern, then we see the true heart of the people. We see the true heart of those who are supposed to be great leaders. The true heart shows up. And they are just as full of fear as anybody else. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. Are there any ears? What, what the, the CB radio talk is saying? Oh, got your ears on. Got your ears on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Tasha. So, um, so now, the, to me, in my opinion, how much time I got? Let me see what time it is. Got it. In my opinion, the problem is we are not being spirit led. We're being led by something but not by the Spirit of God. Because if we were being led by the Spirit of God, we would get the results that come from the Spirit of God. Am I right or right? Yes, amen. So now, St. John 16, let's go ahead and get this over with. St. John 16, the verse 13. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. St. John 16 and 13, just, just, just a verse to, uh, what do you say, Pastor Bobby? St. John 16 and 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. What is he going to do? He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, mm -hmm. but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. Now, he's going to lead you to how much truth? All. All what? Truth. People of God, there is a, the scripture spoke of this. The scripture said there's going to be a famine for what? The hearing of the word of God. It didn't say there was going to be a famine of the word of God. No. It said there's going to be a famine for the hearing of the word of God. So what that means to me is that truth has been veiled. Yes. Truth has been veiled. So now we're more apt to respond to fear than faith. Mm -hmm. Because we see people dropping dead all around us. We see people losing lives and things happening. And so now we respond more to fear than faith. Because it seems that fear is winning. Now, I know I'm right. Mm -hmm. It seems that fear is winning. So where are the people of God at? We are doing what Peter did. We're doing what Peter did. Yeah. When, Peter, when the Lord resurrected. No, before he resurrected. When he was in the grave for three days, what did Peter do? Peter said, I go a fishing. 
Yeshua said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. So when Yeshua was in the grave, Peter said, I'm going back to what I know. He said, I'm going fishing. I don't know what y'all do, but I'm going fishing. I'm going back to the things that I'm familiar with. And this is what happens when the flesh gets afraid, it goes back to what it's familiar with. The flesh is familiar with fear. It's familiar with, with doubt. It's familiar with hate. So we go back to that we're familiar with. Rather than saying, wait a minute, I am not that person anymore, and I refuse to go back to being who I used to be. Amen. Not going to do it. No matter who dropped dead. Mm -hmm. Not doing it. But the scripture said the spirit will lead us where? Into all truth. truth. Romans 8, 14. Now, the, the problem is, how is it are we led by the spirit? What does it take for one to be spirit led? What does it take for me to hear from God and know that it's God? You see, I got so many people trying to tell me what to do. I'm just going to say it because it's true. That right. So, so many people tell me, don't do this, don't do that, don't preach this, don't preach that. And I just listen to them. I don't tell them, I, I just listen. Because the final word has to come from the word of God. Right? Romans 8, 14. What does it say? Romans 8, 14. Uh -huh. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Who are they? They are the sons of What's God. What's that John 1 and 12 say? So as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, when we talk about the sons of God, the sons of God look like, act like, respond like the son of God. The scripture said that Yahshua was the, the what? The firstborn among many brethren. So he was the first begotten of the Father. He was the firstborn into sonship. Firstborn. He's not our elder brother. Scratch that doctrine. That comes from not rightly dividing the word. He's not our elder brother. He's just the first son. Read. What verse did I say? St. John chapter 1. 1 verse 12. What did it say? But as many as received him, uh -huh. to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even, even to them that believe on his name. So he gave them power to become what? The Son. sons of God. So then the problem is how to become a son or how to be led by the spirit of God. How are we spirit led? First, first Corinthians 9, 27. Quick lesson on how to be spirit led. Saints of God, I'm telling you. We have just, we're just accumulating a whole bunch of knowledge with no power. We're accumulating a whole bunch of scriptures, a whole bunch of knowledge, a whole power of, look what I know, but we can't live anything. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Man. I'd rather see somebody living holy and not talking say than it. talking a lot and not living holy. Say it, say it, say it. Yes. What verse did I say? You said 1 Corinthians 9.27. What did it say? But I keep under my body. Paul said I stand beneath my body. And bring it into subjection. I bring my body where? Into subjection. Read. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castor. So Paul is saying, I keep under my body. We know the word there, keep under. Hupo piazzo, keep under my body. That means I keep my body in check. I keep my carnal realm beneath me. I keep my carnal thoughts at bay. I keep my, the will of my flesh at bay. I keep under my body and do what to it? I bring it into subjection. So Paul is saying, what I do, I put down the will of my flesh. I go against the ways of my flesh. I go against whatever my mind wants to do, I do the opposite. Because our mind wants to be calm. Our mind wants to be fleshly. Our mind wants to doubt God. All these people that are whispering fear into my ear, I say to you, get out of here. Come on, that one up Come on Father. <laughs> so, so, so we got to understand, folks, it's not just us alone, it's the people who we have in our ear. And most people are not going to tell you what the Word of God says. Right. They're not. Most folks are going to tell you a worldly opinion. 
or an ungodly opinion, I should say. That's what most people are going to give you. And, you know, when we got Google as our main source of information, Come on now. that's a problem. Yes. But what is it? That's a problem. <laughs> you got Google as your main source of information, that's a problem. The scripture said, the spirit of truth will do what to us? Lead us. Yes. Lead us. Yes. Hold on. So that tells me that, and then also when they 14 said they that are led by the spirit. So that tells me, now if somebody is led by something, you ever seen a blind person with a CNI dog? Mm -hmm. yep. That dog has a, what is that thing it's called? A harness. A harness on it. And the, the blind person is going where the dog leads. The dog has been trained to, to take this person in a path to where they won't hit an object, right? Yes. To where they won't run into anything. This dog has been trained for that. Yep. So when you're being led, Paul said, if you look at the book of, we ain't got to go to it, but, well, go to it, Acts chapter 9. And I want to show you something, a misnomer. There's a misnomer, and I, I'm going to tell you what, saints of God, we got to get to the place to where all we want to make sure we're doing is living right and rightly dividing the word. Acts chapter 9. Find the part, it's probably early in the verses, where Saul was on the road to Damascus. Okay, it's already there. Yeah. Right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. Now, I want to show you something that the, the church world has a story about Saul on his way to Damascus that's not in the scriptures. What did the church world tell you? They say that, don't look at it, they'll say that Saul was knocked off his beast, yep, yeah. and that a voice spoke. Right. That's what they say, right? Yeah. They said he was knocked off of his beast, and they get a hundred with it, too. Yeah. But is that in the Bible? Yeah. Read it to me. Let's read and see what the Word of God says. All right. He wasn't yeah. on no beast, people. Yeah. He was walking. What does it say? Acts chapter 9, starting with verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, uh -huh. went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Whether they be what? Men or women. Right? So he, Paul said he got papers from the magistrates or the higher-ups that if any of what of this way, if anybody is following this Yahshua character, we're going to bring them in. Yeah. And if we have to, we're going to kill him. Because Paul was known for killing him. He had a reputation of hope. Okay? Somebody had to die so he can keep his reputation. Read. All right. Verse 3. Uh-huh. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Uh-huh. And he fell to the earth. And he fell off of his beast? <laughs> Does the scripture mention a beast? No. It doesn't do it. Said he fell to the earth. It didn't say that he fell off a horse or a donkey. Nope. Let's keep on reading. Let's see what happens. Read. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Shaul, Shaul, tis the Kiyama. Read. Verse 5. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priests. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, uh -huh. what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Verse, okay. Keep going. Keep going. Verse, 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 verse 7. Read. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. All right. And Saul arose from the earth. Listen to verse 8. Very and, clearly. What is that? And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. How did he get there? He was led. How? By the, by hand. the hand. He wasn't on a horse. No. He wasn't on a donkey. No. They led him by the hand. So then, meaning that they held his hand. Why? Because he was blind. And so he needed to be led. Yeah. And one of the best ways to be led is to put your hand in the man. Put your, what, what, what does it say? Put your hand 
Put your head in the hand of the man who still the water. Put your head in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. You know any more? That's kind of old. I don't know no more. Put your head in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself, and you can look at others differently. Hallelujah. There we go. So, but being led by the hand is one of the best ways to be led. So then we have to know that we have our hand in his hand by the Spirit. So then wherever the Spirit leads us, he's going to lead us into what? All truth. All truth. Now, Romans 8, chapter 1, last verse. Romans 8 and 1. Now we see the Paul went on a horse. Now people are going, you can say what you want to say. Get mad at me. Say what you want to say. When you get done talking, provide the verse. Yes. Show me when he was on a horse. Stop all of that talk. Well, they really got to say he was on a horse. He was led by hand. If there was a donkey available, why they lead them by hand? The donkey could have found his way to the The donkey could have, they could have just led the donkey. <laughs> yeah. Well, Paul on it. Stop the madness. Bring it down. I was like, read. Can I give you a verse? No. Romans what? Chapter 8. Start with verse 1. All right. Last verse. Romans chapter Six. 8, starting with verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation uh -huh. to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but what? But after the spirit. Uh huh. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of the law of sin and death. Hold on. The law of the spirit of what? Life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Most people are not free from the law of sin and death. Thank you. Thank you. That's the problem. You still have a sin conscience. There's a verse in the book of Hebrews that talks about the sin conscience. It talks about us needing to be purged from the sin conscience. What is that? That means the consciousness of you being a, sin, a sinner yes, yes, yes. has dominated the consciousness of you being a son. Yes. So if we're purged from the sin conscience, that means that we don't have the sin mentality. Are y'all here? Yes. And that's why we are so lost sometimes because we still act like sinners. We got a sin mentality, whether in the wind or a God mentality. And so therefore we can't be led by the spirit because we're led by our flesh. But the scripture said, they've been made free from the law of sin and death. Right? Read. Keep reading. Uh, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, now hold on. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. Look, free from what? Laws. It's getting you free from the law. It's getting you free from the law. Why are you free from the law? Not because I'm a lawbreaker, but because I keep the law by my spirit. That don't mean that I keep the law in my flesh. I keep the law by my spirit. Yeshua said, I have come to do what? Fulfill the law. When something is fulfilled, that means it is finished. Yes. How do we fulfill the law? By perfecting love. He said love is the fulfillment of the law. Yes. How did he perfect love? The woman caught the daughter. What did he do? Did he stone her to death? Nope. No. The woman at the well. What did he do? Did he ignore her? No. The, 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 the Phoenician woman, the Syrian Phoenician woman, whose son had died, did he ignore her? No. no. He perfected love. He showed love to people that we would have hated. Perfected love. Love is the fulfillment of the law. All these people trying to keep the law with their flesh and they can't love nobody. Mad at folks, cursing at folks. You trying to keep the law with your flesh. If the law could have been kept with our flesh, the Lord would not have came from heaven. Amen. Amen. You can't keep the law with your flesh. Keep on trying. And you're going to fail every time. And I got a little caveat for you. If you flunk at one law, you flunk at them all. Yeah. I think that's what James that's said. That's what James said. Yeah. He said, if you miss one point, you're guilty of law. Start over. Yeah. Your whole life is going to be start over. Soon as you fail, try it again. That's why the Lord came and gave us his spirit. So we wouldn't be bound by our flesh. And once the scripture said in St. John 4, 24, that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him how? In spirit yeah. and in truth. He said, worship him where? 
in spirit. He didn't say when. He didn't say you got to worship him on the Sabbath. He talked about where to worship, right. not when. Amen. Amen. Get that in your spirit. And even, even with the where, they get it wrong. Right. They didn't get the where wrong. Boy, it's just so difficult to get saved people to live saved. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. I remember Pastor Ernest Roman said once I heard him say, I heard Pastor Roman say, I want to preach till the saints get saved. I was a young minister and I said, what? But now I understand. He was saying that the saints, us who profess Christ, are some of the most wicked people on the earth. Yes. You better hear what I'm telling you. Us who profess Christ are some of the most hateful people on the earth. Read, Pastor Bible, Romans 8. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, uh -huh. in that it was weak through the flesh, God, God sent, sent his, his own son in the likeness of sin. Now, flesh. God sent his son in the likeness of the flesh and for sin, and did what? Condemned, Condemned sin, sin in the sin flesh. flesh. God sent his son in order to be an example to us. Now, the Lord didn't just come to the earth and then leave and say, I holler at y'all. No, he came to the earth, he left, and then he sent his spirit back to the earth. The only way we can live as Christ in the earth is that we have his spirit in us. And the only way that we can live as Christ in the earth with his spirit in us is to be led by his spirit. That's the key, people of God. We've got to be led by the spirit of God, even when our flesh wants to act up. When our flesh wants to retaliate, we've got to yield to the Spirit of God. To the, the ability to perfect your thought pattern, to, to ease your temperament, when you feel things coming, the ability to think in your mind and say, wait a minute, before I speak, let me think. Yes. Before my mouth starts running like a river, let me think about what I'm going to say. Amen. That is a gift. That is a gift. Because most people just mouth just run like somebody give me a term. Just run like a faucet. And then afterwards, you know what you be saying? Man, I shouldn't have said that. Oh my God, I shouldn't have said that. You got called for I'm sorry. No, you ain't you're pitiful. Because you keep doing it. At what point do we stop? When do we grow up? When do we grow up and when do we have a permanent hold to the hand of God that's leading us? Why do we keep letting go? Why do we keep letting go? Why do we keep on going back to our flesh? What is there a point you get to to where you don't go back to the flesh? Is there a point when you go into the realm of the spirit and you stay? Come on, people. I heard Apostle G. E. Bradshaw say, the last time I went into the spirit, I didn't come out. Oh, I like that. I'm still in that apostle. I'm still in it. Understand that, people. There's got to come a place in our life to we are determined. And I don't know who was talking this morning. I think Pastor Rochelle about husband and wives. You got to get to the point where it ain't about your husband and it ain't about your wife. It's about what? Amen. Well, well, she won't. <laughs> what do you mean she won't? She ain't the, she ain't the boss of me. Remember that? Yeah. You ain't the boss of me. It don't matter what she won't do. It don't matter what he won't do. It's about what he has done. Yes, yes, yes. And I tell you right now, if I live saved and live right long enough, somebody's going to notice and somebody's going to say I'm following him. Amen. We got to get to a point in our life to where the power of God is so demonstrated in us that it's obvious that we don't get to a point of hate or anger. Let me tell you people, as I close, and I know somebody will say, you shouldn't have said that on Facebook. Too late! Well, it ain't too late yet because I ain't said it. But it will be. It will be too late in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me tell y'all something. I am at a point in my life where I'm, I'm being persecuted by the people who I never should be persecuted by. Never. When I say never, people that you bring into the world People that you raised up with as a child. Lying. I'm talking not just lies like, you know, not just a three or a four. I'm talking tens. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Heightened lies. But I haven't responded 
and I'm not going to. You know what my response was? I called one of the people and I said, I love you. I said, now I heard you say this. I'm calling to get your opinion, but you're not answering. But guess what? I love you. And whenever they decide to call me back, my purpose is going to be to inject love into the congregation. Into the conversation. Say congregation. Into the conversation. Right, 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 right. You see what my heart is. So that's the purpose. It don't matter to me what you think about me. It don't matter to me what you say about me. What matters is am I being led by the Spirit of God? That's the only thing that matters. So you go ahead and lie on me. You who I birthed into the earth, by the way, birthed you. I had a part to do with it. <laughs> but you go ahead and keep on lying, keep on lying, keep on lying, keep on talking. You who I was raised with, keep on talking. But one thing that you have forgotten, the Bible said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You forgot about that part. And you wonder why your world is in turmoil. People of God, when will we learn? When will we learn? When will we learn? Spirit led. That's the best life. The next time somebody get on your nerves, put it at me. You know, I, I thought about people getting on your nerves. And I can see some nerves. And I see somebody jumping on the nerves. <laughs> Pulling your nerves and elbowing your nerves. And maybe you get on my nerves. Next time somebody get on your nerves, just relax. Oh, flick them off? Don't flick them off. That's what tell me. Flick them off. Listen, next time somebody gives you nerves, think. The goal is to be able to be led by the Spirit. First, the first action is not in your arm or your fingers. The first action is in your mind. Yes, Lord. That's the first action. What is that? That's some, I said last verse, didn't I? Yes, but that's okay. Yeah. Romans 12 and 2. I said last verse says, did say that. Did say that. Rewind. I said the last verses. Romans 12 and 2. What is read verse 1? Just the GP. All right. Romans uh, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Uh huh. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye you present your bodies a living sacrifice, uh -huh. holy, acceptable unto God. Which is what? Which is your reason. Wait, 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 wait. Which is what? Your reasonable sacrifice. Something to brag about. It ain't even nothing to brag about. It's like a man who tells his wife, I pay all the bills around here. I go to work every day. I go and I bust my butt for the house. And I'm paying, and I'm making money, and I'm paying the bills. Newsflash, you're supposed to. <laughs> what? That ain't nothing to brag about. Amen. Why are you bragging about that which you're supposed to do? I'm sorry, brother. Y'all get me later. But I'm just kind of telling the truth. Tell Read. Verse 2. Uh-huh. And be not confused. I don't hear you bragging about I love my wife as Christ loved the church. When you gonna brag about that? I don't hear you say, man, I love my wife. She's the apple of my eye. I'm so in love. I'm all shipped up. I don't hear that. Read. And be not conformed to this. Don't world. be shaped after the world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. So the next time somebody get on your nerves, act in the renewed mind. Y'all feel that? All be led by the It's tough, but it's possible to be spirit-led. Yahshua was spirit-led at all times. Yes, he was. When he went into the temple with a whip, he was being led by the spirit. Yes, he was. To kick some tail. The spirit was leading him to have a business. The spirit said, have some business. Okay? But he was in the temple. He wasn't on the street fighting people. He was in the temple. Purging the temple. Yes. So be spirit led. The spirit will never lead you. The spirit will never lead you to hurt somebody or to speak evil of someone. The spirit leads you to inject love into the situation. Next time somebody calls you and says, Girl, did you hear so and so, so and so? Be spirit led and say, Well, you know what? I haven't heard that. But how about we stop right now and pray for this situation? Yes. They'll stop then. I remember I was I was doing an attempted attempted uh, gossip. To uh, two brothers, Peter and Paul. They were twin brothers, Peter and Paul, back in the early eighties. I don't know what Peter and Paul is now, but they were twin brothers, and they were they were under Apostle uh, Crowder. And um, I said something to them about Apostle Crowder that somebody else had said. And Peter said to me, "What's his name, Brother Webster?" And I said, "I end up, you know, I'm feeling good at my gossip now because they want to know a name. I'm winning." 
I said, well, you know, I ain't going to tell you my source. I'm winning, right? And he says, oh, no, 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 no. I just want to call his name out in prayer. I'm losing. <laughs> I said, oh, man. He said, what you want to pray for him? And I was like, oh, I'll tell you what. I was on my way inside for revival. I felt horrible the whole service. After service, I, I went to Peter and Paul and said, hey, y'all forgive me. I shouldn't even say that. He said, oh, it's okay, brother. Why we pray for you during service? <laughs> Or just in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Why are we carrying gossip? Why are we taking bad news and ignoring the good news? Y'all know bad news travels oh, yeah. faster than good news. It's like wildfire. Man, something good happened when you hear about it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So saints, let us be led by the Spirit of God. Take off your flesh. Especially people who claim to be saved for so long. I've been saved before saved was even out. I got saved before the Lord came. Okay, you've been saved all this time, but you can't be spirit led. Okay. You've been saved all this time, but you can't be led by the Spirit of God. Let's be spirit led. And don't let anyone, don't matter who they are, don't let anybody take you off your post. What the scripture says, not the scripture, the song says, uh, I shall not I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Yeah. Like a tree planted by the rivers, I shall not be moved. That's going to be moved. Nehemiah said, I'm not coming down. Didn't he say that? Yes, he, did. he said, Nehemiah, you got a phone call? He said, take a message. I'm doing a great work. I'm doing a great work, and I can't come down. Do y'all know that Nehemiah finished that wall in less than three weeks? Yes. They have been building that wall for years. And when God spoke to Nehemiah, he got it done in three weeks. Mm -hmm. What took him years to do, Nehemiah, spirit-led, got the job done. He wouldn't let him be, be, be distracted. He would not be distracted. So say to God, Let's be spirit led. And let's show some love to somebody. Come on, this is a new year and a new season. Let's walk in a new vein. Show some love to somebody. Yeah. And don't, you know, make a declaration this is not going to be a year of gossip, a year of tailbearing. Stop it. It don't matter to me what somebody say to you about me. If you choose to believe it, that's your business. Do your thing. Do your thing. All I ask is that we be spirit led. Be spirit -led. If you stop folk in their track, you know, I always wonder. My daddy used to say, my daddy used to say, I want, and I didn't understand what he meant by this. He says, I wonder why they told you that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You wonder why? Every time I would say something, I wonder why they told you that. I, my dad didn't give a good description sometimes. What he meant was, why were they comfortable coming to you with that mess? Yes, yes. That's what he meant. When I realized what he meant, I said, oh, man, he was slicing me the whole time. And I didn't even know it. It's like you made a cut with a razor blade. You don't know until the next day. You wake up and try to move. Oh, what happened? Yeah, all oh. Why do people feel comfortable bringing mess to you? Huh? Do you work for waste management? Are you the garbage man? Or better yet, the worst are you the garbage truck? Hallelujah. All right. Let's stand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Yes.